it's your boy Ancient Albatross here again with the Cypher Unlimited crew minus one. Unfortunately, Anthony couldn't make it tonight, but I have the lovely Alpha Dean with me here. And just as a quick reminder, if you haven't already, be sure to follow us here on Twitch and subscribe to us over on YouTube. It means a whole lot to us. We just hit a thousand subs over there, but we're still trying to reach even greater heights. But Dean, what are we doing here tonight? Man, Al, you know what? Tonight's going to be a relaxed night. Yeah, like you say, we're minus one. Minus one always kind of, you know, catch you in the feels, you know, because we do love just being like the, the, the three caballeros that we are. But we're going to talk about what we've been reading, what, uh, you know, recent RPGs we've been looking at outside of Cypher System and how we might bring those things into play or influence our Cypher games based on, you know, the stuff that we're seeing within these games. Um, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be quite a laid back, you know, conversation, you know, guys out there on uh, Twitch or wherever you're watching us have any questions for us or anything, you know, let's participate. Let's make this a fun discussion, you know, and without further ado, Al, why don't you start us off? Uh, so, oh, firstly, thank you for the follow Rollcraft. Uh, but yeah, uh, so my book that I picked is one I picked up actually at a uh, game hole con. And the one I chose is Ryutama. Sorry, it's a little bright. There you go. Ryutama. Very, very cool game. But yeah, let me, I'm going to read a little um, description of it that I got off the website. Uh, and yeah, if you look in the chat there, there's also links to both games that we'll be talking about tonight. But either way, let's go dive right in with the description for Ryutama. So it was originally written by Atsuhiro Okada in 2007, then translated to English in 2015 by Matt Sanchez and Andy Kitkolski. So I'm probably butchering that name. But either way, Ryutama called itself a natural fantasy RPG. It is a fantasy role-playing game set in a western medieval style setting. The conceit of this setting t is that at one point in everyone's lives, people get this intense feeling of wanderlust. They put their daily lives on hold and travel the world with newfound companions. They find out more about the world and at the same time learn more about themselves. Ryutama emphasizes travel, exploration, community, friendship, harmony, and growth. There is also a console RPG-like combat system. But while combat certainly happens, it's not the central focus of the game. Adventures usually involve traveling from one town to another, packing gear, crafting items, cooking, and sharing along the way getting lost, meeting people, and sometimes cute monsters along the way, uh, braving the elements and trying to set up camp properly. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's the gist of the game. And yeah, so it's a rules light game with the majority of its mechanics, handling, traveling, exploration, inventory encumbrance, and its resource management. But it handles all these things in a very simple way. It it's also has a very fun process in place for creating the world and uh, the towns and the cities that you're going to play in. Because Ryutama actually does not come with a preset setting. It's all something you generate as you play. But we'll talk about that a little more in a bit. But... If I wanted to play a cipher system game that focused on these elements, I would definitely, like uh, an exploration-based game, I would definitely use Ryotama's mechanics to like as inspiration for my cipher system mechanics. And let me just discuss a little bit on how they handle traveling and some other things here. Um, so, when you travel in Ryotama, it's four sets of rolls. At the start of your day, there's a condition check, which tells you how good your body's doing how well how well you rested basically there's then a travel check which is done uh to see if you're in the going the right direction because travel is a big thing you might get lost it might take longer to get to one place to another place and that's handled through this travel check there's a direction check oh, excuse me i mixed that up that's the direction check i just uh described sorry i'm still new to the game the travel check is when you're um, seeing how well you traveled during that part of the expedition, whether you took any damage or suffered any consequences or you handled it just fine. And then the direction check is the other one I just described where you're trying to see if you're going the right way. Lastly, you have a camping check at the end of the day where you set up camp and if all things go well, you get a lot of your health back. Uh, and your mana, or MP, is, it's called in this game, mental points, not mana points. Um, and yeah, it, the way that I uh, see that running in Cypher System is when you're going from point A to point B, again, you want to keep track of things, 
uh, in a like a survival type game, this would be awesome because again, traveling and how you get from point A to point B is very important in the survival slash exploration games. And uh, yeah, there's also a very simple encumbrance system where items have weight, but it's very simple. There's no like pounds or ounces or whatever have you. Uh, small items simply weigh one, medium items weigh three, large items weigh five, and then uh, very large items weigh seven and usually need uh, some kind of conveyance to carry or some, some wagon or some something. Um, yeah, and in Cypher System, that'd be super easy to do. You just basically call your might, your carrying capacity, and then you have right there, bing, bang, boom, you have a very simple encumbrance system for Cypher System. Um, there's also durability with items, and durability is tied to the size, so if a, an item of size 1 would only have one durability initially. Again, things can change depending on how, you know, cypher system, you can do whatever you want. But things lose durability on a fumble, or in cypher system, a natural 1. Which, again, very simple. I love that concept in a, like an exploration survival type game. And then here's the very, very fun part, where you create the world and you create towns slash cities. Um, there is a sheet... Uh, I wish I could show you guys a little better, but for each time you guys or the party encounters a city or something like that, you go around the table and generate the city. There's certain aspects on the city creation seat. Here we go. I'll find it right here. So each person picks something about the town and they get to fill in the blank, so to speak. So they have the town name, the town population the ruler or representative, the environment, the representative buildings, specialty goods, sights and sounds and scents, and lastly, the town's threats. So you would go around the table and each person would fill in one of these spots, kind of investing you in this world that you're creating together. And the world is done in a very similar fashion. It has the same kind of boxes and you go around the table filling in these details about the world. And that just is, it's, that's like Cypher's bread and butter doing like collab improv. So I feel like that would be awesome to use within a Cypher system, exploration, survival, whatever have you game. And yeah, there's a lot of other rules and stuff within Ryutama, but this is the ones I want to focus on. Um, yeah, I think it'd be super fun and easy to tweak these for Cypher system. And I would definitely love to run a gritty survival type game with these rules, like maybe zombie survival where you're like working off of a camp and exploring the nearby wilderness. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it seems awesome. That sounds like a lot of fun. And the whole concept of doing a survival game based on that is pretty sweet. Um, anything else you want to bring up about it or, you know, touch on? No, so I would just say if you haven't checked out this game before, definitely check it out. It has a very cozy feeling. It's described, uh, I believe, by the website itself as like sort of a Studio Ghibli of RPGs, where again, you're you're living. You're, you, the wanderlust aspect is very like there's not a lot of danger present in the world, um, but again, you as a GM can create whatever dangers you'd like. But it has a very again. A, 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 I'm lacking a word, better word to describe it other than cozy. It's, it's very cozy. If you look at the art within the book, it, it, it has that very... Let me see if I can get a full page spread here to show. It has a very, like, I don't know, old school RPG, like, cozy feeling vibe to the art. Um, and, yeah, the, the mechanics and the rules, how they describe things. Um, and even the player classes are things like merchant, noble, um, farmer... Uh, it's, it's very, again, it's not high gonzo anything. If you were looking for something a little more laid back, a little more, again, uh, SW aunt gamers said in the chat, real Thomas sounds like a great way to simulate Oregon trail or Silk Road. It's exactly the vibe you get from playing this kind of game where all your resources matter. Um, yeah, it's, it's again, Usually, when we talk about cipher system, we talk about trying to take away excess, like not keeping track of all these things. But the way it's presented in this book made me want to consider playing a game where we, you know, we have all these sheets that keep track of our items, that keep track of our food and water, you know, so the trip is safe and not dangerous. I enjoy that aspect. And this game presents it in a very, very rules like manner that has me thinking about it for cipher system. Nice. That sounds awesome, Al. I mean, you know, this just gives you an insight into 
how you can look at another game flex and then flex your muscles and cipher with it because you know again that flexibility and modularity of cipher gives you the ability to do that so without further ado if you have no uh qualms about it al i'm going to jump right into better angels yeah go for it all right so better angels first of all let's take a look at the cover of the book i don't know how well you guys can see it but Everybody knows my passion with superheroes and so on and so forth. This particular game is you actually play supervillains. And so it's a twist. Um, let me just read you the quick intro that they have for the game. It's shorter than the one for uh, Ryutama, but you know, it's very simple. It starts out, the world shall be mine. A demon gave you superpowers and it demands evil. No, not just evil, but evil. In Better Angels, you play a supervillain attempting the ridiculous acts of villainy in order to control the demon that gives you amazing powers. And you play the demon of the player next to you, pushing that player supervillain to greater and greater wickedness. Do too much evil and the demon might take control entirely. Too little and, well, it's a demon. It'll find its way to punish you. Better Angels focuses on characters' moral stances. Is your villain insightful or devious? Are you cunning or patient? Is your courage as great as your cruelty. These characteristics drive your superpowers. They shape your relationship with your demon and are shaped in every scene. Get ready. There are diabolical inventions to create, enemies and rivals to thwart, and plots and schemes to launch. An entire world to conquer. All it will cost you is your soul. With that being said, you know, the concept of it is really cool because you create a mundane character, a you know mundane human, who basically is possessed by a demon. Um, the concept overall is that you're at your core a good person on some level there or another, in order to try to stop the demon from being as bad as it wants to be. You know, so you don't want so your per your 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 human, you know, who is possessed by the dev the demon is a good guy overall. Well, what's crazy about it is you build your mundane person, but the person to your left builds your demon. So, oh yeah, that's like, so that's like really, really cool. So you literally build your mundane person with, you know, all their quirks and interesting ideology. So you might build, your character might be a brain surgeon. Uh, another character might be a, uh, a housewife who takes care of lost puppies, you know, whatever. But then you get possessed by, you, you become host to this dark soul, this dark entity. And the person next to you creates this and plays it during game. So how this would relate to Cypher system is absolutely wonderful because what you do is, the way I see it is because you build, you build your character based on aspects like they are, I was saying, like cunning and patience, courage, cruelty, so on and so forth. So you build these aspects and then the player to your left, you know, whoever you, who's playing your demon, they build their portion of the aspect. So I can see that being like giving your character uh you as a player build a character with like from uh using first responders where you can build a mundane person with a with a career curriculum so on and so forth using first responders as a template for that and then you can go and look at unmasked how you built the villain side which means you can combine these two concepts and look at the companion rules from predation. So all of these things get wound up into this glorious ball of fun. And literally the person playing your demon is basically acts out all sorts of atrocities and villainy and so on and so forth, trying to push your character to do evil. Whereas you as the player are playing against their, their whole idea of, you know, uh, you know, being evil, you're the good guy. So you, you want to calm it down. So, you know, they give examples of play, like, for example, as a GM, I might set the, you know, set the villains on the path of 
they want to uh, they want to steal a, a a new piece of technology, you know, where, where the demon would want to go in and just like kill everybody there and take the piece of technology. You as the human, as the host, are trying to figure out how to keep collateral damage down, you know, and it becomes a play, you know, it becomes a three-way play between the demon, the hero, you know, or, or should I say the host and the GM. I think it's brilliant. I, you know, I, I can see just plugging these in and then using the way those concepts of the uh, aspects like the courage and so on and so forth. I would build those in as, you know, skills that the person would be trained in. We build it out that way. And then, you know, of course, you know, um, you would, uh, you know, give them quirks and things like that. And probably, you know, throw in the concept that, you know, with the, with the demon, those are, the demon might always have one free player intrusion built in because they're always trying to, you know, thwart you. So you would have these player intrusions that you would have to contend with at least one per session that you know was coming, you know, little stuff like that that I think would be great, you know, to uh, simulate the conflict. Yeah, and like Ken Hub says in chat here, or said in chat here, uh, he says he loves the concept. Uh, also, it's something else to make a connection between players. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's, and, that's, and that, again, anything that provides that level of immersion or another level of immersion, um, you know, you get in your character's headspace, your demon's headspace, whatever have you, that's always good. And especially when the two characters are tied together as in Predation, again, that just adds another that other layer. And it's awesome. Right. It's, it's so cool. That sounds amazing. <laughs> right. And, when, you know, what you're saying, Kedup, that is actually one of the things that was in the original Cypher rulebook, you know, and they still make little references to it, you know, in the revised edition. But if you remember, uh, Al, in carriage creation, there was always all of those connections that you were supposed to build between the players, you know, and it came from their type, it came from their focus, it came from their descriptor, all those things played a portion of bringing the players together. So I think with Better Angels, all of those concepts are like built right in. And especially in like character creation, character creation is a lot of fun. You know, uh, the book is only 178 pages, so there's not a lot to it. It's a D6 system. So there's, you know, there's that, but, you know, the system itself aside is the character creation process that I, you know, like to touch on, you know, um, and I'm just going to go to the page here in the book. Give me just a second. Um, so here, so when you're building the characters, they give you all these, these different things like strategies and tactics for how your character will approach things. So, you know, you got sinister tactics. So there's greed, espionage, cruelty, cowardice, corruption. Virtuous tactics would be generosity, knowledge, courage, endurance, nurture, or honesty. You know, so these things can automatically be put on either side. And it just depends on how you want to make these things, you know, operate within the parameters of your game. So, you know, you got cunning and slyness, deviousness, being insightful, open and patient so many different aspects that, and you basically have, uh, I believe 10 points that you start out with to, to build these. So literally, I'm sorry. No, I, so I'm, I'm saying just to think about that in terms of Cypher, you know, um, these things could be spent, you know, you just tell the people, okay, guess what? You have to make sure you incorporate, you know, 10 points worth of uh, a worth of these abilities and each ability, you know, will cost you a different thing. So if you want to go down the tactics line, those, there's a one point a piece. Specialties would be like two points a piece and strategies are two points a piece. So you'd end up, you could have anywhere from 10 to, or five to 10, um, what do you call it? Uh, traits built into your character or skill sets, which, could make you know for some really interesting stuff. 
That definitely sounds really cool, and especially if you were to bring something like that over to Cypher System, you just add another layer to the character creation, just based off inspiring, excuse me, inspired by those two, I forget what they're described as, the virtuous and devious tables right. or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that sounds super cool because it just adds some more customization to your character. And in a game like this, it seems like, you know, you would want that <laughs> because you want that demon, or I'm assuming it's both for demons and humans, this ability right. stuff. Right. Yeah. See, the, the way it's broken down is step one is you spend your points on your human, the points that you have to spend on the human side. Step two you pick a primary strategy, a power, and an aspect for your demon. But you don't pick that. The person who's going to play your demon picks all of that. Then step three is you spend some, you spend uh, three points on their, on someone else's human. And then step four is you pick a power and an aspect for the, for, you know, the other, the demon you're going to be playing. So it's really interactive and you really build the characters together. You know, so it really sets up for an interesting dynamic at the table. So so just for clarity, you said you end up picking skills and abilities or whatever they call these things for other characters for like, 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 let's say I'm someone's uh, demon, like someone else is human or uh, yeah, right. someone else is the human. I'm the demon. I would get to pick abilities for that human. Yes. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> right. You know, it's really cool that you go back and forth like that, you know, and what I really dig about it is like, too, the way they have it set up is that, so let's just say me, you and Anthony were playing. You would play my demon, but Anthony would play your demon. You know what I'm saying? And I would play Anthony's. So we would not be connected. You know what I'm saying? Like that. And so it's really, it really offers crazy character play all the way around you yeah, know that, that sounds really fun to actually play with like um even like not diving too hard into the point system or whatever like you have 10 points or whatever have you in cypher system you could just say hey pick two abilities that that character is gonna have right. exactly, <laughs> exactly. I would, like i said i wouldn't even really worry about the points like that i was just saying that you know because I think what I want to do now that we're sitting here talking about it, and it's crazy that we're sitting here talking about it and it's going the way it's going. But wouldn't it be cool to do this as a one shot? I'll just make up some uh, random characters and demons and then we'll do it that way. We'll let, the pe let you guys randomly pick, you know, a demon just to play it out. And then a second session will happen where, you know what, I'll let people build the characters themselves. <laughs> that would be, I think, I think that'd be fun. That definitely sounds like a lot of fun and something fun to play with, even like, um, you know, in a home game or something. Um, that yeah, that I, I and again like just gold boils back to what Kethub said, where it encourages that character connection or the character connections. And uh, yeah. to answer his question real quick, Kethub, do, do they kind of work like approaches in, in Fate Accelerated? Yeah, you could you could literally see that you know um, that its approaches you know because it's really the moral compasses that drive the character, both moral and immoral, you know, to, to, to say the least. But yeah, that definitely super fun sounding concept. Um, and I might think about something like that, that cause that sounds like just something fun to throw into like almost any game. Like it doesn't matter right. what genre, what setting, whatever have you, that sounds like, that just sounds fun. <laughs> Right. When you think about when you think about the companion system for that, that, you know, Cypher system came up with for predation and you start looking at the flexibility of it and you start looking at other things because, you know, how we talked about doing Pokemon or something like that. Again, the companion system comes into play, but how would you tweak it by looking at a game like Better Angels? the conceptualization of how to, to, to manipulate that particular mechanic that's already built into the game, just it kind of exploded because I didn't think about all the different ways you could do it. But now the fact that, again, you're bringing players together, you're bringing the, the, the story, you know, you're, you're giving more player agency to what's going to happen in your stories, you know, 
And as we like to talk about here at Cypher Unlimited, we're always talking about improvisation. This is this would like really be awesome because you're going to have to truly learn how to play off of each other, especially when you're dealing with your demon. <laughs> yeah, it all, it all sounds like um, how in cartoons, you know, there's always like a little angel or a little devil on the guy's shoulder or whatever. Right. And you have to like argue with it and like. It, it, that, again, that's just one of the first things that comes to mind because that sounds really fun, a really fun dynamic to see at the table. Um, and yeah, you should definitely run a one shot of that or that concept, however you imagine it. Right. Uh, because yeah, that, that sounds like a lot of fun. And the other thing about it too, there's the other deeper concepts that the heroes in the game are actually angels, you know, who uh, find truly altruistic people in order to connect with, you know, and, you know, the, you've got the ones that know the truth about what's going on with like a lot of the, the bad guys. You got those that don't care what's going on and think demons, you know, and anybody who bonds with one, you know, should be wiped out, you know. So they give you a lot of layers to add to your stories as far as what the players will have to contend with as well. So you as a GM have a lot of tools to play with you know, a lot of story elements. And I think that's the biggest thing about the game. The game isn't mechanic heavy or anything like that, but it's very rich in uh, world building concept. Not even the world that is built, that they built within the, the, the framework itself, but how you can build this on your own, which is another huge aspect that I think people who play Cypher system and want to really, you know, get the most out of it you know could embrace yeah that that again it sounds super cool and and immersive which is again i mean anything that provides another level of immersion is always a plus with cypher system uh because of the narrative nature of it and th it's just that's a it's like hopefully watching this you get you realize it, the importance of reading stuff that's out of your real house it's not necessarily your system of choice because there are nuggets to be found everywhere any right. like in like any rpg book anything you fancy or anything that seems like the theme is on point but it might not be cypher system don't let that keep you from trying new things because you can always incorporate them into cypher system we've talked about this on more than one occasion um personally i don't run anything these days except for cypher system but i play lots of games you know i will play lots of things you know when i go to my game store somebody will have a new board game or they'll have a new rpg or they'll have an rpg i haven't played in a long time and if they're doing one shots i hop right in the reason and the reason behind it is the same thing what i was saying is not just you know the idea of incorporating something else, but it's also the idea of keeping keeping your brain, you know, fresh and 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 pliable. Because the one thing that we need to learn about cipher system or any narrative based game for that matter, but especially cipher system, is that pliability gives you the flexibility and the 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 ability in general to craft great stories is supposed to be cinematic in nature. It's supposed to be, you know, like watching your favorite TV show or being in your favorite movie. This is what Cypher System, you know, its overall overarching goal is. So when you keep that at your, at your fingertips, you then develop an, in, uh, an ability to do, you know, some really nice you know some really nice things and so like i said i play tons of stuff i buy tons of other games you know to read you know like i'll say we bought we bought both of these games at uh game hole con they were both picked up at game hole and um like i said i i couldn't wait to dive in and like it says 178 page book i read it cover to cover twice you know, and it's like really a good read. You know, it's it, it's like I said, far more world building and story than, uh, you know, than mechanics and and you know strategies in that respect. So, yeah, 
like yeah. Al said, read, enjoy, partake of other stuff. That that is the beauty of again keeping your perspective fresh. Like that's the 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 shortened version of everything you just said is keep that perspective fresh because before I'm gonna be uh, this is again a first hand experience myself. Um, before reading Real Tama, I've thought about maybe doing like an exploration or you know zombie survival, whatever have you, where inventory matters or you got to keep track of all that stuff, and. Before reading Ryu Tama, I thought that was just going to be a major headache. Like, why would I want to track all of this? Like, it, it's it's going to get overcomplicated. I can't really think of a good way to do it. That's not going to, like, break immersion or flow or whatever. But how it's presented in this book was... It changed my perspective. Now I think I can do that fairly easily while still maintaining the flow and narrative because it's presented in such a simple fashion within this book. And without the fresh perspective of that, I probably would have never even considered going back to that idea because I, you know, my initial thing was it was too complicated, but fresh perspective. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it makes, make, makes a huge difference, you know. And if we could say anything to, you know, everybody out there who watches our show, who indulges in RPGs, who loves cipher, cipher system in of itself, and, you know, for those of you who are narrative-based storytellers, this is like, you know, the best thing for you to do, you know, to continue to be able to manipulate the story the way you want it, you know. Um, Ketup says, I personally stole the resource management from Alien RPG. I like how it's cinematic depletion chance instead of tracking points for ammo, oxygen, food, etc. Exactly. That's one of the ways that I look at a lot of things. If I want to deal with depletion roles and stuff like that, that's what I do. I just add a depletion role. And nine times out of 10, um, you know, depletion roles only come up when you know either I want to do it as a GMI or if players do roll a one or something like that, you know, in the midst of the combat, or if it's just, it's just at a good moment, you know, within the story. Okay, make a depletion roll. Let's see, you know, or or let's make it like you were talking about a supply check, you know, do, how, do I have enough wheat to plant for this season, you know, or whatever the case may be, a little cool stuff, you know, and the alien RPG is hotness. If you haven't looked at it, you should. Yeah, no. I need to, yeah. Uh, I've I've been, uh, you know, I'm usually the one. Again, I say this all the time. I I'm not. I'm the one who doesn't read. I'm I'm horrible at reading. But I actually sat down. It's probably the fastest. Uh, this is not a very big book. I don't know how many pages it is. And I skipped over a lot of portions, like the spells and abilities. Right. I just wanted to get the core gist of the set, the system, and what it has to offer. But. I read this so much faster than usual, and I've before this I read Gods of the Fall, which was long overdue for me to read, um, and I'm finding myself um, reading more and more. So yeah, I think I am gonna pick up Alien, and you know I do have what Monster Care Squad to read now, and um, Call of Cthulhu, um, Regency, yeah, yeah Regency specifically. Uh, and I do have the starter kit for Call of Cthulhu, so I do, I do want to check that out as well because there's a solo adventure in there that teaches you how to play, and that sounds awesome. <laughs> uh, here, but, yeah. I was just going to speak to what you're saying about reading more. It's funny, Al. I have been, I've been spoiled lately because I've been doing a lot of audiobooks because of 12 hours of work, so I, I do audiobooks. But there is something intrinsic about sitting down and turning those pages or flipping through the screen if you're doing it on your tablet or whatever. And literally that's what kind of happens is you you get you get sucked in and you can't kind of help it. You know, you initially and it just has to be, but the subject matter has to be something you enjoy. You know. So uh Jason said mostly I took countdown clocks from blades from blades for other systems. Clocks are higher I mean, sorry, clocks are in other systems, of course, but it wasn't the first place I used them. Yeah, good the clocks are good. Like I said, you got so many different ways to track things, you know, and you don't have to do it the old fashioned way where you got a list and, okay, mark off three arrows because I shot three arrows, you know, or, or, you know, mark off, you know, one magazine, you know. Um, but yeah, um, 
without Anthony, unfortunately, it's probably going to be a shorter night <laughs> um, with just us two. Uh, I think we've kind of hit the nail on the head uh, with our little talk here. Um, and, and again, it, it's just if you take anything away from this talk is enjoy more than what like you, your, your normal comfort circle of games are. Uh, definitely branch out and read something if it seems interesting to you because you can always take that and bring it to what you love, which is Cypher System. Well, what we love, which is Cypher System, and we assume you love it too. Uh, but yeah, don't just because it wasn't written by Monty Cook Games and it wasn't made by them doesn't shouldn't keep you from enjoying things. And with that, if you like us and you like what we do, be sure to join our Discord. We have the largest fan-run Discord of all things Monty Cook Games and games being run at all times of the day, all times of the week. If Discord is not your thing, join our Facebook page. Not as big, but still plenty of discussions to be had. You can also subscribe to us on YouTube. If you ever missed one of our live Twitch streams, we always upload to YouTube afterwards. And we have crested that 1,000 point. We are so excited about that, and we're just looking to get to bigger and better heights. So if you can subscribe there, we're going to appreciate that too. And if those things aren't your things and you just want to like support us financially in some way, you can give us a little donation on Kofi. Our videos will always be free, but those donations do help with little things like Zoom calls. And you can always get some merch in our one of our merch stores. We have hats, notebooks, mugs, so on and so forth. You can get a shirt like one of like the one I have on. We have GM Roulette shirts in that as well. As you guys all saw, there is the prototype cape out there as well. Capes will be available. And after all of that, <laughs> we love you guys. Uh, yeah, capes will be available at some point, and we're gonna try very hard to include a cape in our upcoming giveaway uh that is still upcoming i assume um again i don't want to say any dates or anything but it'll probably be uh next month december i'm assuming probably uh, yeah, late late this month early december sometime yeah uh oh but, and guys don't forget we already had it we had one entry for sally it is awesome you guys got to get those entries in for sally i mean come on that that, that that's that's like a guaranteed win, whoever wins the Sally. And the, the first entry that we got is a banger. It's really good. It is super good. Uh, honestly, I'll be very surprised if anyone tops that entry. <laughs> quite quite oh, honestly. Yeah, we, well, no, we need people, no, I want people, to... people I, I, that's supposed to push you to like <laughs> submit the best because there's already I'm... something pretty good. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the but... first, that first entry was well thought out. It's awesome. You know. it's, it's very good uh but yeah uh, as usual thank you again for stopping by everybody this is a great little talk uh hopefully you gleaned a little insight uh learn something interesting about two new games maybe look at them pick them up for yourself because they are quite wonderful um yeah so again thank you and from us at the cu we will see you later later people <laughs>